I know you're out there. I can feel you now. I know that you're afraid. You're afraid of us. You're afraid of change. I don't know the future. I didn't come here to tell you how this is going to end. I came here to tell you how it's going to begin. I'm going to hang up this phone, and then I'm going to show these people what you don't want them to see. I'm going to show them a world without you. A world without rules and controls, without borders or boundaries. A world where anything is possible. A, B, N. It's headphones steel! Phil Zeal here, back with another film review, and in this case, it's going to be the Matrix trilogy uh, 4K versions. So, I've been meaning to rewatch the films just um, kind of to do a different sort of review, in that um, I always found the film to be good, but um, in hearing that the sequels might not have been as well received as the first one, I kind of wanted to do an over overall recap of the trilogy. Um, but to scrutinize it a little bit more than I normally would have because from my point of view or for me, the, all three films were good, I enjoyed them. I never really found any issues with them, um, but I wanted to cover some of the themes that might have been covered in it and just generally look at it from less about from liking it, the films and fan, fan service and kind of the some of the stuff that was kind of good and weird and things like that. Um, so jumping right into it, as I mentioned, um, I watched the 4K versions of the film. So right off the bat, when you're watching the first film, for me, I noticed that it had less of the grayish tint that I remember the film having, and it had more of the greenish hue and tint in the set or uh, that matched the second and third ver um, films so it kind of feels like they or basically when you're for i'm um, doing an up convert to 4k you're gonna get better picture quality but it feels like they kind of normalize the colors to make the films match their overall theme so if you you know for example watch the fi original film back in 95 or 99 or whenever it came out and then you go straight to the 4k versions now it's kind of it's not really jarring but you kind of for or for me, it was easy to forget that. Well, or kind of, it kind of no, for me, it kind of stood out as noticeable that, hey, there's this isn't quite as grainy or grayish as I remember it. Um, I kind of the original film I remembered as being a little bit more nitty gritty. So kind of along the lines of the Star Wars original trilogy, and then um, jumping into the prequels or even the sequels. But kind of if you look, if when you go from the original trilogy to the prequels. You kind of get that same effect as the, when you go from The Matrix to The Matrix Reloaded and Revolutions. But in general, I thought that it was not, it's not necessarily a bad touch. I kind of like that it was a little bit more normalized. Um, you still have a lot more of the grayish tint and overall it doesn't change the impact of the story, but it kind of feels weird when you're going into it and you see that all three films now look about the same, which Looking at it now, overall is a good thing. I mean, I, I, there's probably purists who think that they shouldn't change that overall tint, but for me, it just stands out that much more because you are up converting the film to 4K, so the col colors will pop out that much more. Um, and then going into the film overall, so the other part of this review is coming off of Johnny Mnemonic. A lot of the um, Things you see in Johnny Mnemonic that were kind of bad are actually well done in this film. So if you go back to my Johnny Mnemonic review from a couple weeks ago, you'll see that you'll find that I end up um, talking a lot about how the film, how Johnny Mnemonic is an alpha version of um, the Matrix. It's not even a beta version just because there's a lot of good themes and ideas, but it's not implemented as well as it could have. But a lot of that stuff is fixed when you get to the Matrix. So one of those things that stands out is the idea of the construct. So when Morpheus is teaching Neo about um, the Matrix, telling him what it is, um, kind of how it's set up, 
it's presented better than when you have to when um, Johnny Mnemonic has to hack into his brain and you have Ice T telling Dina Meyer that he you can tell he's in his brain because you're hacked into it. Whereas the Matrix, it it doesn't necessarily overlook that whole part, but it's that it you they show a loading program to show that you're in your brain. You have Morpheus explaining to Neo that you have to that they have to hack into the Matrix via various ports. So they kind of bring over computer lingo to say that getting into the matrix is not as easy as you know signing in or logging in because what they're doing is obviously illegal to the matrix and the framework of the matrix so having the contract construct is their way of kind of teaching people who don't understand the matrix about it but also telling teach or having the audience understand that this is a hack and this is kind of how they have to get into the matrix and they have to find safe broadcast points so basically back doors into the matrix in order to navigate it and then they um further enhance this idea um in the second and third films when neo needs to meet the oracle and there's no easy way to get there so they uh, um, show the um, computers having their own back doors so they obviously understand back doors are able to navigate them and um showing this is kind of a way of presenting the idea of viruses or um, other elements of hacking programs that use back doors to get around the system so the matrix obviously is not flawless but they do what they can and they're having sentinel programs or even the idea that um, agent smith can access them um, shows that they that it's possible that the agent program doesn't have access to it or they don't think about it too much as far as being able to access it. Um, otherwise, the first film I find was probably the better of the three because they make an obvious or a more obvious compare or presentation of a yin yin yang symbolism of duality. So in the first film, we have. Um, Neo and um, Morpheus in the sparring program and you have um, Morpheus I believe in black, Neo in white and in their fighting you get a lot of overhead shots, uh, front shots and flipping and all of that so basically that obvious connection that we're going to have a positive and negative up and down um, machine versus real world um, comparison throughout the franchise. So this ultimately progresses into the duality of Neo and Agent Smith. So in, by the end of the first film, if you're um, not really, if you're not expecting a sequel or a franchise, then you expect that Neo built or defeated Agent Smith and that's the end of that. So you don't really have that duality set up, but we have that brought up in when I'm um, Neo and, Mor and Agent Smith first meet up in the park after Neo's conversation with the Oracle and you get that idea that now we're going to have a duality and a further setup and progression of this storyline so um, it's kind of bringing up that idea that um, Neo and Agent Smith are the flip sides of the same coin so Neo is the, it has risen from the human world and Smith having been deleted but not being deleted like in um resigning to deletion like he's supposed to becomes that rise in the machine world so um it kind of again mirrors what star wars was trying to do as far as the chosen one um and bringing up the force dyad but it got kind of convoluted i will admit but it's kind of a match there where you're having Neo as a chosen one, but you're not gonna. But they, the Matrix kind of presents that a little bit more simply with the Oracle saying everything that has a beginning must have an end, and um, Neo not being able to understand the choices beyond what he wants to understand of them. So, if you don't really think too far beyond it, by uh, the Matrix Reloaded, they bring it to a conclusion by the end of the third film that. Neo is slowly progressing his understanding and needs to um, understand things beyond what he um, is or wants to understand. So by um, not understanding it or not wanting to understand his choices, it makes it harder for him to um, go into meeting with the um, architect that much more 
easy, but um, you do realize that the architect is simply trying to balance the equation. So that's what the prior um, um, versions of Neo and the Matrix did is that because they couldn't understand or maybe they didn't have that full understanding or um, as Neo realizes that no one knew about it, um, they did that because that they understood that, that or that's all they could understand they're doing. But Neo um, now having the progressed knowledge um, of his the past iterations and the help of the Oracle and Morpheus understands it more than he otherwise would have. Um, so beyond that, um, the rest of the film kind of um, is just random stuff and things that stood out. For example, like when I'm watching the Matrix Rev uh, Revolutions and we have the final fight scene, one of those things that stood out was that um, Agent Smith had, and all his various copies has the faces of those stage play masks. So happiness, sadness, anger, sorrow. So when you're they're panning over it, one of those things that I didn't notice before was that you had you see um, that kind of stage play. So I don't know if that was um on purpose or not but i kind of thought that that was intriguing that i never really thought about before so watching that now was kind of good um we have um kind of flash gordon style vibes at the end of it um that neo is supposed to save everyone uh, kind of along the lines when morpheus and um niobe are looking at what the um Sentinel Jar are doing when they freeze and when um, Com Ca uh, Commander Locke I think was talking about um, hope and dreams being Morpheus's realm. So basically Neo is like a, the Flash Gordon of the film where he's gonna is supposed to save everyone. Um, and the final question which I actually kind of liked but it wasn't presented as well as Total Recall was when Morpheus asks if this is real because he's dreamed about the end of the war for so so long but I think he was kind of trying to tie together the idea of the con of the architect saying that they've destroyed the Zion five times previously and they've become exceedingly good at it so Neo, by Neo not accepting his deal is presenting a new sort of peace between the machines and the humans to kind of break the wheel. Um, but otherwise, as far as the films go overall, this time around I actually thought... I don't know that the films or the sequels are necessarily any worse than the original, but I think it kind of falls apart when you try to explain more of a world, or it's hard to explain a world backstory when you're trying to expand on a film that's so good. So things like the back doors were more prominent. Um, you have um, Seraph kind of being the uh, a firewall program, I guess, for the Oracle. Um, they talked about the exile a lot. So. Uh, for example, Sati is the exile, so that it wasn't necessarily explained too well why she's the last exile um, in that whole situation, but in looking at the cast list for The Matrix 4, it seems like that's potentially what they're going to explain a little bit more, maybe. Um, or maybe something that they explain to hope to explain as a fallout for the, pro the trilogy. Um, but when watching the film, so now having recently, or I want to say recently, maybe in the past year or so, having watched Max Payne and rewatched the Doom movie, the films, the uh, lobby scene in the police station of the first film when uh, Ma Mor or when Trinity and Neo are going to say Morpheus felt a lot like a Max Payne scene in slow motion with all the bullets, which they repeated in the second film. And kind of like Doom, or kind of with Doom music, so it's kind of a cool scene there, which I still like. Um, I like that the first film started and ended with the Heart of the City Hotel, or Heart of the City Hotel. So it was a kind, of, kind of a nice touch that I didn't really notice before, or didn't really remember from watching it previously. Um, and then I liked the PvP... Um, with Smith in the second film, and then the uh, PVE scene with the Merovingian in when the Morpheus and Trinity are trying to get to him. So the scene was, I like the scene, but I don't know that the Merovingian scenes were, I don't, I like them, but for me, the character development for his bodyguards were kind of limited. So they did explain the 
via Persephone as far as the vampires in the system, which the which um, the Oracle also kind of talked about that when you hear about ghosts and goblins and vampires, but that could have been better explained in the film as far as prior versions, or maybe that the Oracle was being intentionally um, cryptic about it because she knew that the architect was going to tell Neo about it, but things like that start to fall apart so that kind of took away from me that they could have um spread that story out a little bit better that um she tells neo that there were prior that she could have told neo about the prior versions of the matrix and her role in it so when he goes to the architect it's a better conversation and by the time he gets to um, his fight with smith he goes into a better understanding it but still trying to defeat smith as a program and delete him until smith still says everything that has a beginning has an end so neo then understands what he has to do and he has to let smith override him and take it from there um and then one of the things i didn't notice or didn't remember noticing in the second film is that the door to the source is only f open for 314 seconds which is the value of pi so i thought that was an intriguing thing um i liked the apu loading scene in the third film so a lot of those um the dock loading scenes were pretty cool i liked the whole um, battle sequence i thought that was well presented um, but the problem I had here was that the captain sounded like he, there was a lot of, there was a weird Morgan Freeman-like voiceover, so the character seemed like he could have been played by Morgan Freeman, or he was trying to do a Morgan Freeman voiceover, so I thought that could have been done a little bit better. Um, um, so that was kind of weird, but overall I thought that scene was good, and I kind of wanted... Or I don't know that I, we needed more of the dock loading scenes, but I liked that whole setup with traveling with a Niobe piloting the ship through the service level and the maintenance hatch. So I thought that was a good setup as far as um, um, Niobe in the first or in the second film having driving to save uh, Morpheus to show her driving skills and then finishing that off with her driving or flying the sh uh, ship through the maintenance hatch. So. Um, overall a uh, good scene there um, and then um, I liked that in the first and third films we have Neo taunting Smith in much the same way but now that Neo has more of a mastery and knowledge of uh, what Smith is about and the Matrix and skills and all of that um, I thought overall that was uh, very well done so um a nice little touch there so watching them individually is things that are easy to there's a lot of little things like that that are easy to miss um but are not missed as much when you watch them all together um so overall if i was to grade the franchise i would probably say that um in general the I think the films hold up. I like that there's a lot of connections. It's not easy to um, set up a film like this and have. I mean, granted, it's only three films, so you know when you have more, uh, you know, nine films like Star Wars, you have like seven or eight films with Harry Potter. It's um, easy. It's not as easy to have um, a franchise that you can keep track of um, that you don't have as many storylines to keep track of but when you're trying to um um maintain storylines that are very heavy on back-end lore it's one of those things that you want to make sure that um you keep track of all the storylines i guess and keep the lingo and terminology and all of that the same so i think they did as good as they could have for the films but it didn't feel like the stories were e as evenly spread out as they could have when you get to the second and third film so while the second and third film were released back to back i think that they could have explained certain storylines a little bit better um so for example if they had moved the whole idea of agent smith um to the end of the second film so don't even bring up his whole thing about the copies until the end when he 
uh, when they show the revelation that he is able to copy himself and get into the real world by the idea of copying himself into Bane, or leave that whole thing in the middle when they're trying to get when the ship, um, um, or when the guy they're trying to get the um, Oracle's message out to Neo that um, change that up a little bit, I guess, to the point in the end of the film where. Uh, where they still get the message out to Neo and all of them to get to talk to the Oracle, but um, I guess leave leave uh, I guess leave that whole point to the end of the film. So uh, like the whole copying scene, so we don't know what so that we see the whole idea of him uh, of a Bane get, or Smith copying himself into Bane, but leave that to the end of the, or leave, I guess, leave that to the, or move that to the end of the film. So he, so we find out that, um, he was being held by Smith, kind of like he was, like Smith was holding Morpheus in the first film. And then Bane wakes up at the end of the film and they inter interrogate him and leave it at that. And then Neo is in his coma. Um, and, they can either leave that or um, change that so that um, he wakes up and we have the whole train scene and all of that, but leave that alone and then have um, the Oracle telling Neo about um, balancing the equation and the exile and the prior versions of the Matrix and all of that. So we end, so Neo has this whole idea of has, has more information about the back end of the Matrix. And then from there, leave the rest of the story as far as Neo meeting Agent Smith learning about the copying and all of that and try working to piece all the or work all the pieces together and then you know feeling the sentinels and all of that and figuring understanding all of that to the first film so um things like that I mean the story could have been reworked a little bit to better explain those stories so it felt a little bit janky I didn't mind uh, or I did not mind the whole thing with um, Neo's choice as far as Trinity and Zion, but understanding that um, he's going to have to make that choice, but he doesn't want to. He wants to save um, everyone, so um, having to make that choice and trying to work his way through it and not making the same decisions as his prior or the prior iterations of the one, so um, things like that. So some things were, some things didn't. So if I was to, gr or going back to grading the films, um, I mean, on a personal level, I still give them an A. I, overall, I like them. They were good and it kind of worked. But watching them this time, I kind of found that they were a bit janky or felt a little bit janky as far as the ordering and the pacing of some of the storylines. I'd probably give it about a B to a B plus, like right in that 85 to 89 percent range. Um, mostly because I they did what they could, but it felt like the two movies were rushed to get them completed at the same time. So I think that um, rather than um, putting pushing them to so far to so close together, I think they could have um, better spent time by putting making them uh, have a better release schedule and spending more time on the story to have more explanations in the film and fewer, you know, hey, you got to figure out what's going on and things like that. So I think that's kind of where it suffered by the time you get to the end of the film. So um, that's why I kind of reduced the grade based on that. I mean, I think that's why it's, for me, it's like a fl flipping the coin on one hand. They did pretty. They did over. They overall did pretty good as far as maintaining the overall theme and um, outline of the story. But once you think about it a little bit more, it kind of makes it harder to follow. Makes it feel like they spent not enough time on the story, or they came just very barely close to getting the story right, and um, from there it kind of falls apart. So overall, not as I don't think the films were as bad as they the reputation I keep hearing about are, but um, they're not perfect. So a lot, it goes along the lines of um, Star Wars as well, that um, the overall stories work. Once you get into the nitty gritty of it, it doesn't probably hold up as um, well as you might want it to, but um, 
I think they weren't, they're not necessarily as um, bad as they probably, the reputation of them probably are. So um, things like that kind of, so for me, it's one of those things that um, there's, uh, it's kind of flipping the coin on them that were they perfect? No, but are they bad? Also, no. So for me, the worst grade that I could probably give them is that 85%. So I still enjoy them and I do like the the color of conversion of the first film. So the films uh, flow a lot better than um, having one, color, one film that's kind of grayed out and um, not as colorful and two that are you know solid green and have perfect coloring so um having watched the 4k versions overall i think they're very well done um and um i enjoyed them this time around so i hope that the fourth matrix film does get released this year but i feel better um having watched them and feel a little bit better for going into the fourth film to see how um, the fourth film holds up to the um, first three. I may rewatch them uh, as it comes closer to the actual release date of the film. So, you know, if it gets pushed to next year or something like that, then um, that might be that might also be a possibility. But if it's released this year, as in by the end of 2021, then I may or may not. But now that I kind of feel better about kind of seeing the back kind of more of that duality seeing some of the flaws in the system that it's one of those things that um is i don't know it feels like it's one of those things that could that the fourth of them is probably going to be one of those things that corrects um the um the storylines of the first three films kind of like basically basically along the lines of the exile what happened to neo having the original or rumors of the original cast in the fourth film makes it that much more intriguing to see what um they bring about as far as um um how do they tie up all those loose ends and what kind of story they bring about for the next film in the franchise so that's all there is for this particular review so if you have any questions comments feedback stuff that you want me to talk, that you want me to kind of talk about and review as far as thoughts or your point of view on stuff that the matrix trilogy did good bad indifferent maybe something you feel i'm totally wrong about then you can find me on twitter at patel in zero one the website is headphones reviews for past episodes subscription links supporting the show um, and all of the good stuff. Um, and of course, if you're a supporter on the Patreon at patreon.com slash Patel in zero one, then you got um, the May bonus recap episode and upcoming content and all of that uh, last week. So look out for that. Um, but you get um, access to what to upcoming content, what, uh, what's going on with the um uh, show and content and things like that and it also helps support the show you can give um your own recommendations for stuff to review and watch and all that and um as a, as a patron you can um get a shout out to your own content and things like that and so that's all on patreon at patreon.com slash patel in zero one but that's all there is for this particular episode thanks for tuning in and until next time